Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city, past and present here on these little vlogs. So I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow a friend everyone back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and TV drama here in the UK and from around the world. So if you can check that out, that will be fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoy today's feature. Welcome to an At The Movies, City At The Movies special, yes, we've had a little uh, release on City Plus, haven't we? So you've got to be a subscriber, but uh, I think they still do a, a three thing if you've never done it before for 30 days, or something like that, so you can get to watch this if you want. Obviously, we're talking about this uh, production together, aren't we? Which obviously documents the last 46 days of the 2021 season uh yeah a lot going on um what do they talk about what don't they show what do they show 114 minutes or so nearly two hours so yeah we're gonna have a look at that today a little timeline of it and then my little thoughts as to perhaps where it could have been a little bit better because it, it was very good but uh yeah, there's uh, slight improvements he could have made. In my eyes, anyway, obviously everyone's got their own opinions, haven't they? Anyway, we sort of get to start the thing. It sort of shows us, and I think we saw that on the trailers, Gundo and talking to the team in the dressing room. It's actually before the PSG away game. Uh, of course, said it goes to uh, Pep looking back at the COVID season, how it all started, how it didn't, uh, how it didn't start very well for us, etc., etc., and all turning around by December with the highlights of games, good and bad, obviously, in that run. And then we get to the crux of the matter. We get to the crux of this uh, documentary, uh, sports documentary, the last 46 days. Uh, throughout this, we get Walker, Foden, Edison and KDB, the main guys, chatting about various things throughout throughout this uh, little documentary, adding various comments. Obviously, other players are included as well, but they're, they're the main four guys who are chatting throughout it. Uh, so it starts with the Borussia Dortmund quarter-final away, of course, where we take a 2-1 lead to Germany from our home leg, but uh, obviously we go a goal behind, but uh, we win 2-1 again, so that's that's happy, they're all happy in the changing room, we got through to the semi-finals, it's very, very, very noisy dressing room, it must be, you know, when you, you think you look at these things, it must be a hell for the opposition listening to this, mustn't it, and this this is why I think there's certain, a little, some, some things we missed from this, I would, wouldn't have minded seeing, even though it would have been quite depressing, but anyway, more of that in a bit, yeah, happy noisy dressing room, uh, Aki at, back at the hotel at the night. Aki was a, having a look, not brilliant. He's not he's not a concert pianist, but he was tinkling the ivories quite uh, proficiently there, Mister Nathan Aki. So he likes to play the piano. Uh, we had, had words from various backup staff, of course. We had the fitness and conditioning coach talking about recoveries for the day after, and obviously they they did stay over in Dortmund and recover the day after. And then it was on to the FA Cup semi final versus Chelsea. But this is this is where it sort of brushes over things and it starts with this one really not too much on that one there's a very very brief thing and obviously looking at uh, the sort of very brief excerpts of how disappointed the players were at the end obviously on the pitch and being uh, sort of cajoled by the Chelsea players etc but uh, yeah that was it there was not, wasn't too much on it and then we go over to Aston Villa at Villa Park uh, and of course uh, Diaz does the t main team talk on this from this little thing uh, Obviously, Ferner adds a little bit, but he's he's usually the main guy. But uh, Diaz does a little team talk, uh, very very captain esque. That's very good. Obviously, it didn't start very well, did it? Twenty seconds down at Villa, uh, twenty seconds one nil down at Villa Park, uh, and obviously Stones he gets sent off, doesn't he? He does show little snippets of him in the dressing room. He's literally kicking every ball and heading every ball in that second half as he as he's watching it on the telly. As obviously we we cling on to win that one, don't we? Uh, it shows a little bit of KDB's injury then that he had, obviously, uh, and the physio and him working on it and foot massage and various things to get his ankle. It's not so, not an injury he's had before, I think he was commenting uh, during that. And, of course, the build-up to the Carabao Cup. I mean, I was there. I was fortunate to be at that one. Uh, obviously, 2,000 City fans were allowed. And uh, they're actually at Wembley. And they're watching snippets. Obviously, it comes to a conclusion. The United Leeds game, obviously, which ended nil nil at Ellen Road, didn't it? So I think we were watching that in the um, uh, in the stadium as well while we were waiting for the Carabao Cup final. But uh, obviously, that brought the title just a little bit closer, didn't it? Uh, you get the third of them back with his team talk before the final. 
Interestingly enough, obviously it was nil nil at half time. We were battering them, weren't we? And uh, Laporte is warned by Pep uh, just to uh, be careful because obviously he said he wants to stay with the full eleven because he's actually received a booking if you remember in that first half. But obviously he went one better, Laporte, didn't he? He didn't only just stay on the pitch; he scored our winning goal, of course, and the celebrations are as you'd expect on and off the pitch. And uh, obviously it's nice to see behind the scenes where the players are sort of contacting the wives and girlfriends and families and stuff, and uh, and obviously. Uh, talking to him on the phones after you know in little quiet parts in Wembley, you know, they've gone somewhere a little bit quiet and stuff like that. So that was good to see. And then it's preparation for PSG away, of course, the first leg of that. And the comments that Edison, you can't drag Edison off the pitch. He just loves uh, loves goalkeeping. He's very hard. He's always one of you know. We always have to get him off the pitch. And same with Phil Foden. He just loves playing football, and it's hard for him not to leave the pitch as well. Uh, Edison's interviews actually not. He's, he's all in in obviously his his native language. He's not. Uh, I'm not too good. Not too sure about his English at the moment. But obviously he did all these interviews in his native language. Spanish is it or Portuguese? Portuguese isn't it? Brazil, yeah, of course it is. Uh, is it? Is it Brazil? Yeah, uh, Portuguese. I think I'm right in saying. Uh, yeah, and it actually Gundogan. Uh, admits that he doesn't normally do the team talk. Yeah, so he, he did for this one, which we'd seen at the start of this little documentary. Of course, PSG took an early lead, uh, which wasn't very very welcome, but uh, interesting half-time talk about we're as good as them and they're good, but we're, we're good as well and all this sort of thing. And obviously it did work, didn't it? Because uh, uh, we took a 2-1 uh, lead back obviously to the second leg uh, and obviously they wind down in the hotel afterwards and stay over again and obviously I think uh, Stones does a quite impressive, it's not a, it's not an Olympic sized pool but it does a quite impressive two lengths of the pool underwater without taking a breath I'd, I'd manage about six feet I think before I'd need to take a breath so that was quite impressive uh, then on to Crystal Palace away Again, Fern does a pre-match talk. Uh, it's, of course, a 2-0 win to take us that little step closer to the title. And then it's back to the PSG and the build-up and the bad weather and all that sort of thing. Uh, again, Fern does his pre-match talk. And, uh, yeah, a solid win. And as congratulations of the dressing room, it's very, very noisy again. Yeah, at PSG, the dressing room was quite composed uh, after the after the victory at PSG. But back now we've won and we're through to the final. Obviously, it gets a little bit noisy again, a little bit rowdy again. Then, of course, we get the Chelsea home match uh, to clinch the title. Again, not too much detail on this one. We do take the lead, but then it sort of just switches to the fact of how did we lose it? They ask the question, how did we lose it? So there you go. Not, But again, another loss, but not too much on, on how the players have reacted to the loss as such. But uh, there you go, more on that in a minute. Uh, they had a staff golf day, I think, the day after. And of course, we clinched the title, didn't we? United get beat at home, got beat at home, and the players are obviously all t coming in dribs and drabs, and they're very happy. Um, and obviously, that's uh, and I think Caldoun's congratulating them by phone, uh, camera phone as well, on winning the league, etc. So they all sit and listen and clap him at the end, and all that sort of thing. Uh, it's a bit on Scott Carson and Edison's kind words about it. Obviously, that's leading up, isn't it, to the Newcastle game when he obviously gets to play, which was very surprising. I think he was told a couple of days before he was playing. So, uh, obviously, away at Newcastle, Scott Carson plays. Yeah, um, and then obviously that's a 4-3 victory. So, I get it. Just highlights of the game, really. Nothing much much untoward. A meeting about the slight lifting of COVID protocols, obviously, then. And obviously telling them there's still some in place, but obviously the, a slight relaxing of it. That was interesting to see them uh, sat down listening to what the rules were. Uh, there's nothing on Brighton away. Uh, did we get beat? Uh, yeah, I think we did. And did we get a player sent off? Yes, I think we did. Um, yeah, no, nothing on Brighton away. So, thankfully, uh, obviously... Uh, 3-2 defeat, was it? I even forget myself. Now it seems to put uh, absolutely nothing on that, unless I missed it, but I'm fairly sure I didn't. And, of course, then we get the build-up, don't we, to the game, the last game at the Etihad for the for the title, where we get the title presentation, which, like many thousands of other City fans, I wasn't able to get a ticket for that one. But, obviously, 
it's Sergio's last game, is it? So the snippets of Sergio, and I, this is the bit, I must admit, I spent five or ten minutes, I was still a bit emotional at the end, because this, this is getting towards the end of the documentary now. Uh, I did get emotional, a bit emotional watching that bit with Sergio. I'm even filling up a little bit now, to be honest with you, but uh, yeah, that's a uh, very poignant, very very, uh, very upsetting towards the end of the documentary, that's nice. But of course, there was 10,000 in the stadium, um, obviously so many missed out. There's great footage of the game and the celebrations, after and certain things I hadn't seen uh, as I say I watched bits on telly but I didn't get to see a lot of the celebrations after uh, it's a shame really isn't it a shame we couldn't actually stop the tape there and just go with that but uh, supporting a club is about the highs and the lows isn't it as I say we'd already had the low of getting knocked out of the uh, semi-final of the FA Cup which was brushed over a little bit so there's a build-up wasn't it the build-up to the Champions League final uh, yeah a little bit of the build-up but uh, uh, but again, we didn't dawdle too long on this one. We didn't see behind the scenes uh, in the dressing room anything about this Champions League final, which is, as I said, OK, from a positive support point of view, perhaps you don't want to see that, but I do. I, I want to see how the team reacts. But uh, there you go. I mean, Cal Dooms is just interviewed saying even, even before the game, he was confident. Even after the game, he was happy with the team and proud of what they'd done. And he's actually, because uh, Kev had gone to hospital, he actually spoke to him later on a, a some days later and so I told him that he, he, Kevin would be back he'd be back he told Kevin he'd be back and he'd win the Champions League for us at, at a later date so but is that the conclusion the conclusion to it no the conclusion is that you get from the inside of a locker you get a locker door opening and a certain Mr Grealish uh, takes something out of it so that's how it ends that's, that's how the documentary ends so I suppose it is on a bit of a high if you like after the Chelsea thing but there you go yeah it is a good watch uh, yeah just a little bit not too much time spent on the lows and that's what you see you talk about together don't you and you talk about the team spirit and we saw plenty of that when things were going really well. I mean, we saw that bit where Aguero uh, gave his card away to one of the guys, wasn't it? Stuff like, you know, all that thing. thing. But I wouldn't have minded just, just seeing reactions. I wouldn't have minded being in that dressing room after that Chelsea semi-final. I wouldn't have minded being in that dressing room after that Chelsea Champions League final. Just, just to see how the players react. Who, who picks who up? How do they pick each other up? Etc, etc. And there wasn't any of that. Uh, perhaps you don't, perhaps some of you wouldn't want to see that, but I do. I, I just want to see how the players react. We know how we as fans react and how, how low we are and how we walk away from the stadium if you were there and how you reacted but it just would have been nice to see that uh, as part of this thing because it should be should be a reflection on the highs and the lows to me and uh, they said that all or nothing if you look at that remember that documentary which was obviously this this takes a similar sort of style and cinematography and stuff to that one but uh yeah, you want to see the end. You want to see when it's when it's not going so well. I do anyway. As I say, I don't shy away from uh, putting things out there on my little history channel and stuff, and about City losing games and lo you know embarrassing things and stuff like that. It doesn't I mean I've, you ever watched my horrible histories. It looks at things that didn't go quite right. I don't shy away from that. I would have liked to have seen that in this, but that's that's me. Perhaps that's a personal point of view. I don't know if you agree with that or, or whatever. Let me know what you think on that anyway. But I think obviously the highlight, the highlight had to be the build up to the Sergio leaving and say that was very, very emotional. And uh, I suppose if they had if they had gone into the dressing room after that Champions League, after after watching Sergio's bit, it might have finished me off. But uh, yeah, I could have I could have paused it, couldn't have watched it later on. But hey, there you go. Yeah, so that's that's the only real criticism. As I say, if you, if you watched all or nothing, you, you we've seen this all before, and it, it was nice to watch. I mean, but there's nothing nothing groundbreaking. I just thought it would have been a bit more a bit more a bit more gritty than it was, and it's nice. Of course, it's nice to see the players happy and celebrate but it's also nice to see how we react when things don't go well I mean we've got another season ahead of us where there's a lot of talk about us winning the Champions League this season but uh, would like to see what the psyche was like and what things like what, what's happening in that sort of thing so but that's me anyway it is a good watch as I said if you if you're not subscribed already please uh, it might be worth taking the trial if there's still a trial you can get or even for one ninety nine. so what it's uh, it is a good thing and it's uh, as I say, even even if it was only for the Sergio element, that was uh, certainly worth the watch for me anyway. So anyway, get to watch it. Let me know what you think in the comments anyway. 
Thanks for watching. What are we going to do? Thanks for joining me for this. Yeah, special. This special City at the Movies. They will, they will continue the City at the Movies, but this is a sort of little special one up or out. Anyway, thanks for watching. What are we going to do the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or perhaps you flit across. Please have a look at my film and TV channel. I only ever ask one thing. If you don't, guys, please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Together. Bye for now.